Hi guys, welcome back to the cocktail vlog. I'm Steve the bartender and today we're making four cocktails to get you through Christmas day. These four cocktails are a little bit more skewed towards warmer weather with a little bit of a sort of a Christmassy twist on them. Subtle, but I think these will go really well on a warm Christmas. Let's get started. So the first cocktail I'll be making is a watermelon margarita. Perfect for the holiday season, perfect for the summer, for an, for an Australian holiday season, for, for like around Christmas time. This recipe I saw like probably about a year ago on Uncle Pete's cocktail shop. If you haven't come across this YouTube channel, it's a small YouTube channel that deserves some love. So make sure you go check it out. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can uh, have a look at his excellent drinks and his, he does a few experiments and stuff. In this case, we're acid modifying. So we're adding acids into the watermelon juice. But don't be scared. It's not that difficult. It's very, very easy. It's uh, just a matter of weighing the watermelon juice and weighing out citric and malic acid, which are very readily available. So you can either jump on, if you're in the States, Amazon, otherwise you can usually get citric acid in, in the local shops in like the baking section, it's easily available. Um, malic, yeah, just jump online, otherwise go to a local brew shop and order some. So the reason that you would want to do this is because if you want to get enough flavor from the watermelon, you would have to have three quarters to an ounce of watermelon juice. But then to balance out the cocktail, then you will also need three quarters of an ounce to one ounce of lime juice. So you're kind of combining the two ingredients together. So you're adding the, the same acid taste or profile from a lime into the juice. Hope that all made sense. So what you want to start by doing, I'm only going to do a small batch because I'm probably not going to make a ton of these today. Start by weighing it. So I'll just get a couple pieces, fresh watermelon, throw it in. So I have 175, 180 grams of fresh watermelon. Adding that in and then tear the scales, reset to zero if it wants to do it for me. Hot tip, do not buy cheap scales. <laughs> so malic acid, which is 2% of the weight of watermelon, 3.6 grams. And simply add it in if I can open the packet. <laughs> so 3.6 grams of malic acid done and then four percent of the weight in citric acid so 7.2 grams done now of course if you don't have these acids and you really want a watermelon margarita then just make it with watermelon juice and lime juice but potentially you may have too much volume and it may the balance will be a little bit off so you might need to adjust a little bit blend so there you have the watermelon juice which tastes like watermelon and lime combined. Let's make the drink. Into a cocktail shaker, I'm measuring 60 ml of mezcal. This is La Luna Mezcal from Michon Khan. I hope that's how you put it out to you guys. Uncle Pete's cocktail shop, he... I'm not sure, in the video he said he did an ounce and a half, but in the description it said two ounces. So I'm just gonna get two ounces, hey, why not? Two ounces of mezcal, 60 ml, uh, three quarters of an ounce, 22.5 mil of your chosen orange liqueur. Pete used Pierre Ferrand, dry curacao. And then same measurement, three quarter ounce, 22.5 mil of your acid adjusted watermelon juice. Not straining that was incredibly lazy of me, by the way. And a glug, I'm gonna measure it in case I go a little bit too hot. A glug, I'm gonna say, and it's not an official measurement, but quarter ounce, seven and a half mil. Is that a glug? Sure. And three drops of 20% saline solution. If you don't have saline, just go pinch of salt. That, that'll work. Add plenty of ice and shake for 10 to 12 seconds. Chilled coupe glass, fine strain that watermelon juice. Got a really beautiful color. As for garnish, I'm leaving it ungarnished. I think it looks lovely as it is. Otherwise, you can always use a lime wedge or a watermelon wedge. They have Uncle Pete's acid modified watermelon margarita. Perfect for the holidays. Cheers. Oh, Mezcal is 100% the hero there. Why I would want to drink it during Christmas, it's because it's summer in Australia. It's hot. Watermelon is more abundant. Uh, on the Christmas table, we always have a fruit platter, and watermelon is the hero there. So 
yeah, this makes sense to me. And the Mezcal is 100% the, the star of the show. Nice, um, it's really well balanced. I think the glug of agave was, was perfect. This is a great cocktail and watermelon is, makes it just really fresh and, and vibrant. On to the next one. On to cocktail number two, the lemon jello spritz. I've been asked to do this cocktail many a times and I just have finally got around to it. So us threefold distilling, we, we make an, a limoncello in-house. This is our take on a limoncello. It's an Australian limoncello. We make a gin with Australian native botanicals. Then we infuse lemon peel, lots of it, three native limes uh, for three months, and then it's sweetened and bottled at 30%. So compared to a lot of commercial limoncellos, it's a little bit higher in the ABV. But the reason being is because we wanted to mix it in a limoncello spritz. So it's a little bit more like lemons, limes, a little bit more herbal, a little bit more complex in comparison to a classic Italian limoncello, which is uh, lemon, sugar, and alcohol, essentially. But uh, limoncello spritz. This one here is perfect for a, for a hot day, for, for a summer's day, for Christmas day. It's limoncello is uh, typically associated with being a digestive. So after a big Christmas lunch, this is the ideal drink, especially when it's warm, it's nice and refreshing, and it's... Apparently, you're gonna settle your stomach. Let's get onto the drink. This is nice and easy. And it's also perfect because it's just built in the glass. I'm gonna measure every ingredient, including the Prosecco and soda. But on the day, let's be honest, you're just gonna pour it in and, and guesstimate it, essentially. So, give this one a little bit of a shake. Got lots of oil in there. Measure 60 ml, two ounces of your favorite limoncello. I'll leave a link to our limoncello in the description below. I'm sorry, I know everyone keeps asking in the US when threefold will become available. It's only available in Australia at, at the moment, but uh, we're working on it. We're getting a new stool next year, which will increase our production. So we're, we're working on it, guys. We'll get there. As I said, I wouldn't probably measure Prosecco in a jigger, but for the sake of accuracy, as I pour it all over the bar, so I'm doing two ounces of limoncello, two ounces, 60 ml of Prosecco, and then three ounces, 90 ml of soda water, carbonated water. Now keep in mind, the recipe, you're gonna alter it depending on the limoncello that you use. Some are really quite sugary and sweet, so you might drop down the Prosecco, you might drop the amount of limoncello. Just play with it. Now, if you want to, you could stop there, but I think it benefits from just a little touch of acid added into the drink so i'm going to squeeze just a little wedge of lemon and a couple drops of saline a 20 percent saline solution otherwise just a pinch of salt lots of ice to the top don't really need to stir it because uh, obviously i've just thrown ice and it's all churned about it's all mixed in together i'm going to add a Nice wedge of lemon, and this has more herbal characteristics than your classic limoncello, so uh, I'm gonna go it with a sprig of rosemary. They have a summary, limoncello spritz, perfect for the holidays. Pressed. You, uh, you get the aromatics and that, that herbal note as the rosemary sticks up your nose, uh, but it's really nice and citrusy. Um, it, it's just a light cocktail. Lemoncello, it's only 30%. This particular one, most limoncellos are 25 to 30%, unless it's homemade and some people just bump up the, uh, the alcohol, but it's perfect for, for your holidays and perfect for hot weather because you can, you can sip on a few of them uh, without having too much alcohol. So this is perfect. Refreshing. Refreshing. On to the next one. On to the next course, which is the rum punch. Now I've picked this one for the festive season because it incorporates the red wine into a rum punch. So therefore, I think it would pair nicely with a cheese platter, say, say in the afternoon or after dinner, you're sitting down, having a cheese plate, this cocktail would pair quite nicely, I think. So, shaken cocktail, and it's got a rum agricole. So it's a Martinique rum made from dressed sugarcane juice, and this one is aged. So it does, agricole typically has those kind of grassy vegetal notes, but this is aged, so that, that has softened. 30 ml, one ounce, straight into the shaker tin. And then we have a light-bodied wine. So a, a Gamay or a, a Pinot Noir, in this case. It's actually uh, called Tread Softly. Uh, it's a local wine, so it's minimal preservatives, uh, actually lower AV as well. Uh, so we have 22.5 ml, three quarter ounce. And then 15 ml, half an ounce of fresh lemon juice. And then Library Code, 
uh, this one calls for a gum syrup. So a gum syrup uh, is a, a simple syrup, or, a, or in this case, it's a rich syrup that has, I think that's how you pronounce it, gum arabic, uh, incorporated into it, uh, which I think it's a sap from a tree. And it just, it's a like a, an emulsifier, it's a thickening agent. So it will add a lot of texture into your drink. So 7.5, one quarter ounce of gum syrup. In this case, it's a Demerara gum syrup. I'll leave a link to Liber & Co syrups. They're fantastic. Add ice and give it a shake. As you may have noticed, by the way, this is a relatively low volume drink. I'm using a little bit of a sort of stubby kind of highball glass, but it's gonna have a large cube in there to take up some of that volume. So hopefully it should fit quite nicely, maybe a little bit short. Lots of ice and shake. Sorry about this hideous scoop. <laughs> what? But cube into the glass and double strain over the top. That is an awesome color. I love that. And I'm perfectly fine the fact that it doesn't like come up to the top of the glass. This looks, I think this looks beautiful. Looks presented nicely. Cat, do you like the look of this? I hadn't planned. Would you like some grated nutmeg? All right, so we're debating what kind of garnish we should put on here. The original had no garnish. Either put, incorporate a lemon twist. Should I do a lemon twist, cat? No, okay. Lemon twist, maybe a little bit of grated nutmeg, just a tiny little bit to sort of pair the, um, you know, the Christmasiness. Christmasiness, is that a word? The festiveness with the red wine. Otherwise, cat suggested a little sprig of rosemary, seeing as we have fresh rosemary from the garden, and that looks really nice. They have a rum punch. Cheers. You definitely get that viscosity from the from the gum syrup. It's just like, because you've only got half an ounce, 15 ml of that lemon juice and only a touch of the gum syrup. It's light on the palate, but it's kind of a little bit juicy from the from the whites. It's just, this would actually, this would pair excellently with a cheese platter, I believe. Actually, it just came to me the reason why I picked this cocktail to be included in this video in the first place. It is it's like reminiscent of a mulled wine, essentially. The only difference is that it's served cold. So it's more suited to the, the summer, the Australian Christmas period. That's why I picked it. Christmas Day survival tip number four, the lion's tail. Now, pimento dram or allspice dram, uh, it's probably more of a, like a fall slash autumn ingredient, but it still suits Christmassy kind of festive vibes. It's winter vibes, allspice dram. And this is, I think this is probably one of the, the best cocktails to showcase pimento dram. So let's get straight into the Drake shaking cocktail based with bourbon whiskey. So we're gonna measure out two ounces 60 mil sorry i know i keep changing my metric and imperials from back back and forth but it must be really annoying <laughs> uh two ounces 60 mil of your preferred bourbon whiskey i'm using buffalo trace which i've been using quite a bit on the channel then we follow that up with uh, the bitter truth pimento dram now of course you can make your own at home um i'll see if i can find a recipe and then link to it in the description half an ounce 15 mil so uh, a liqueur flavored with allspice berries. Then we have simple syrup. I'm using the Demerara. More, more depth of flavor in this one. One bar spoon, one teaspoon. And then we have half an ounce, 15 ml of fresh lime juice. So you may have noticed this, this is kind of like a, a whiskey sour, a tweaked whiskey sour. Instead of lemon juice, it's got lime and we've got the, uh, the pimento dram as a flavoring or a, a modifying agent. Ice. And shake for 10 to 12 credits. Chilled coop, and we double strain into that glass. Yeah, typically when you make a drink that has citrus and, and whiskey, more than likely gonna be lemon juice. So this kind of brings it, the whiskey sour into like tiki territory. Addition of the lime juice, the pimento dram, tikifies it. Now for garnish, you can either do a lime twist or just a little lime wedge on the side of the glass. The lime stout. Cheers. I feel like allspice dram can easily overrun a drink. Allspice is a really strong flavor, but half an ounce, 15 ml is, is just the right amount, especially when you've got two ounces of whiskey. It just provides a nice accent without being overwhelming. It's a, it's a wintry flavor, but because it's in a sour, that's what kind of brings that, that wintry Christmas kind of vibe that I'm thinking in my mind into an Australian Christmas, if that makes sense. This is a fantastic drink. 
If you haven't tried a lion's tail, make sure you do. Um, get right on top.